Hello everyone, I'm Joe Beer, Worldwide Technical Leader for our Power and Utilities Vertical. I'm here today to talk to you about meter data analytics and how AWS can maximize the value of your smart meter data. So let's start here in a typical Amazonian fashion by looking backwards through the eyes of our customers about what their expectations have been and the gaps that exist when they hear they're getting a smart meter. So according to studies, it's all about the bottom line. In other words, saving money on their energy bill, reducing their energy usage. So when you look at these top three items here, recommendations, how to reduce your bill, personalized advice on goods and services to reduce their energy, and early notifications where they're gonna have a spike in their energy bill, uh, utilities need deep insights into consumer energy usage to provide this information. Very good thing to have, right? And you would think by now that utilities are diving in and providing this information. Well, sadly, this is not the case. As the study shows here, done in 2020, there's still an underwhelming usage of meter data. And that's kind of a shame because meters have been out there, smart meters for 20 years now, 750 million of them deployed. And the surface has hardly been scratched just the insights gained uh, from that data for both consumers, customers, as well as grid operations. So let's take a look into what's happening today. And typically, uh, this is the scenario that a utility has with the reads coming in through a head end and MDMS system, and it's being used to create your billing determinants so a bill can be produced. That's the essential thing that must be done. It's the cash register of the utility. On top of that, sometimes that data is looked at for things like load forecasting, outage reporting, and maybe energy usage alerts. There's another layer of use cases, though, which is hardly touched at all. And those are things like helping you optimize pricing, uh, DER planning, uh, participating more effectively in the marketplace, and so forth. So from AWS's perspective, what we posit is if you take that data and you put it in a data lake and you apply AWS analytics and AIML against it, you'll be able to unlock those higher level use cases. So we heard the request from customers about this uh, quite strongly and frequently uh, leading up to 2019. And in 2020, we produced a reference architecture to provide guidance for customers who wanted to create their own solutions uh, to serve up just this need. So this was published in 2020 and then updated again in 2022. Now, not only will Putting your data in an architecture like this unlock the use cases you just saw on the prior screens, but will also unlock many, many more as depicted in this dry drawing here from the US Department of Energy, which they published earlier last year. So what kind of customers are already doing this, you may say? Well, there are several, both large and small. Uh, they implemented these solutions using help from our solution architects. Some of them followed our reference architecture, some went their own route. It's all been working successfully for them. But most of these organizations are uh, good size and they have good size development shops. We heard though from many, many other customers but they, that they wanted additional help to get started easily and quickly. And so with that in mind, we created what we call a quick start. Our meter data analytics quick start specifically. So what is a quick start? Quick starts are automated gold standard deployments. They're developed by either our solution architects or our partner solution architects. They meet AWS standards for security and performance. They're a packaging of what would be hundreds of manual steps into automated code that you download. You answer a few questions, you click a few boxes, and off you go. And typically from 20 to 30 minutes, it'll build your solution. So it's about 20 minutes in the case of MDA, and then you have a foundational working system to get you going with analyzing your meter data. So if you were to go uh, search AWS, you'd find this landing page for the quick start for MDA. The link is on here, which you'll get in the deck. And our initial version was launched in October, 2020 with a updated version which included a data ingester for UK meters which are a bit different in 21 and right now we're working on version 2 of the quick start which should come out within a month or two. 
And so what does this quick start let you do? Well, it unlocks the business cases or use cases that you see highlighted here in purple. Now specifically, it focuses in five areas. Uh, the output of the quick start are APIs. It doesn't come with built-in visualizations because every customer is different. They want to visualize their information differently in reports or dashboards, et cetera. So the output is APIs, starting with actual usage versus weather. This is something that almost everyone needs, and it shows you in a selectable manner aggregates by daily, weekly, or monthly. Next is ML-driven uh, usage forecast at the household level. Then we have anomaly detection, both for spikes and dips, but spikes seem to be the greater of interest to both customers and uh, grid operators, especially for those high bill alerts, which customers really appreciate getting those before they get the shock of a high bill. And then uh, meter problem visualization. In this case, momentary outages. That's something that drives customers nuts. It's very hard for the uh, operations team within the utility to get the attention of IT to create a visualization for them. And so we've gone ahead and made that easier by providing the API, out API outputs. Um, in this case, momentaries and then geospatial coordinates. It's selectable or editable so that you could choose other meter alerts, alarms to look at. And then finally, we've built in, in version two, a volt VAR estimator. With the increase of distributed generation on the grid, it's going to be more important than ever to do active VOLVAR on your circuits. And so many customers now are looking at or they're wondering, gee, if I had VOLVAR running on my distribution service, what would that save me in terms of dollars and CO2? And so uh, we have an estimator in there for that. Now, the architecture for the quick start, which we'll get here in a minute, here we go is um, a bit different than what you see in the generic reference architecture because that is generic and this is a specific implementation. So it still has the same pattern of ingest, a data lake, um, and then ability to consume the data. We've divided that up into what we're calling features, which are the different use case implementations with their own data stores. Uh, that data is accessed via data catalog which makes everything findable. And it's also a nice convenient spot to tie in data governance through what we call lake formation, should you choose to do that. Um, kind of going backwards to the drawing, starting back over on the left, we have the different data sources, of course, the meter data, and then your supporting information, such as your maybe grid topology information, weather data, customer data. So I'll dive into the different segments here in more depth in the following slides. Let's start with the core of the solution, data lake. And within the data lake, the core or primary data flow, which is your meter reads. It starts with the meter data ingester, which transforms meter reads into RK and creates one record per register per meter. I'll talk more specifically about the ingester because it was quite interesting and challenging to make a highly performing ingester that can handle millions of reads at a time. Next, the data flows into the two stages of the data lake, which consists of our staging area and the integration area. There's a uh, glue job that runs that takes the, that data from staging, checks for quality, duplications, and then partitions it up by the reading type, year, month, day, and hour, puts it into the integrated repository. We also have running a parallel set of uh, services uh, based on Lambda, Event Bridge, and Glue, that continually run to check for late arriving data. Customers can adjust the algorithm to determine exactly what is late, and then that data is picked up and inserted into the right partition. Next up is we have Glue Data Catalog. Here, the Glue crawlers crawl the integrated data lake and creates the catalog. Using the catalog lets us decouple the data lake from the serving or consuming layers and makes it highly resilient. Also acts as the single source of truth and aligns more closely with the data mesh concept where you go to a catalog to find your data sources without having to know where all the individual data sources are. The do the buff, sorry, the glue data catalog is also a convenient place to attach in uh, data governance via AWS lake formation. 
which isn't included in the quick start, but customers can add that as they choose. So here's the consumption features I just spoke about, and these represent the different use cases from the AIL, AIML ones I spoke about earlier, such as anomaly detection or uh, forecasting load at the consumer level. And then you can also bring in your other data sources and their individual data pipelines, which are also crawled and registered in the catalog. Now we're going to take a step back to the left and take a look at how we ingest meter reads. This is another critical part of the solution. And as we move from version one to version two of the quick start, our requirements increased going from handling a million meters to 10 million meters. As you can imagine, that's a lot more data. So we need a data processing ingest pipeline that was more performant. So the approach we've taken is we've split it into two components, a custom adapter part, which should probably, we should probably call it a customizable adapter. And then the kinesis flow, which pushes the data into the staging bucket. So the custom adapter, there's two flavors. You can pull data directly from the MDMS as more traditional or directly from the head end. Let's dive into those there. So the MDMS flow, this is uh, typically what utilities are used to doing. They have their MDMS push out the data, usually to the billing system, but they can also make a version of the file and push it off to an inbound bucket using, say, secure FTP or file sync. We have a variety of services to do that. Once the data is in that inbound bucket, then we want to quickly get it to the uh, staging bucket as fast as possible. And again, for 10 millimeters, these files can be pretty, pretty large. So the way we address that is we have a couple of lambdas that are running. The range extractor takes the large files, chops it up into optimal bytes based on uh, a 10 megabit limit that Kinesis has and puts a number of those files out there in SQS queues. Then a second set of lambdas, we call them range workers, those fire up automatically in parallel, and they'll start grabbing those files as quick as they can and pushing them into Kinesis and Firehose and then off to your landing bucket. The uh, approach for doing head integration is very similar on the back end part. You'll see the same things here, but the front part is what changes. And we've given you a couple extra components in here to play with to help learn this approach. So we've included a meter data generator and a head end simulator. There's uh, four lambdas within the step functions here, which you can use, modify as you like. There's a uh, file trigger uh, lambda to push to the simulator and tell it, hey, make the file. You may want to use that to communicate with your own head end to tell it to generate the file, or your head end can get the file on a scheduled basis. There's a lambda that checks for the generation status. Then there's another one that actually downloads the file when the generator status Lambda says, hey, it's done. You can go ahead and grab the file, which is usually compressed because of their size. And then the fourth Lambda does the uncompression, it takes a compressed file, puts it in an uncompressed uh, bucket. From there, the same thing happens. We have the range extractor, which chops it up into optimal bytes, puts all those bytes into SQS queues, and then range workers fire from parallel to push it into the Kinesis pipeline and then into the landing bucket. So this makes a very efficient, very quick uh, way to iterate through this very large files when you have a lot, a lot of meters. Let's take a look now at our machine learning pipeline. And we'll start with the simple orchestrator that we built, which consists of a lambda and two state functions. Uh, the, the lambda here just decides whether or not the model needs to be trained. When your first time through, of course, you need to train it. And then once created, you're going to want to invoke retraining periodically, say once a month, as new meter reads come in. So in that case, the upper state machine will get triggered. Otherwise, the model is considered up to date and the lower state machine gets triggered. <clears throat> Let's dive into each of those then. So on the model training one, Lambda prepares your data, grabs your weather information, weather forecast, and aligns it date-wise with the meter reads. Typically, you're going to look uh, back a week if you want to forecast a week forward. You look back a month if you want to forecast the month forward, etc. It trains the model in SageMaker. We use the deep AR algorithm. The advantage there is it creates one model that spans multiple similar devices. That's the whole focus of deep AR. 
in that case. And you don't have to create one model for every meter, which would hardly work uh, volume-wise if you're doing millions and millions of meters. And then once that model is trained, it's deployed to the endpoint. So you can do real-time inference you know, for your meters. However, if you've got millions of meters, right, you're not going to want to hit that endpoint for millions and millions of meters because it's going to get overwhelmed. So this is where the lower leg comes into play, where we have a, a batch way to forecast in advance and to do anomaly detection in advance. So that's depicted here. Let's do the bottom leg first. So here we're using the Amazon SageMaker batch inference capability. Looks to iterate over the whole set of meter data. And then Lambda picks up those answers and caches them in S3. On the upper leg, we use a function within Glue called the ML Learning Transforms. And it allows you to do ML model training as part of your Glue jobs, which is really handy. Uh, also lets us access third party ML libraries. So we're using Facebook's profit library, which is really good at anomaly detection. So that model is ran and the results are also then cached in S3. And now just a few words about something we're just finalizing, which is the Voltvar optimization estimator. So in the future, or even now, with more and more distributed generation coming online on distribution grid, uh, there's a very real potential to have an over voltage situation as say rooftop solar feeds in uh, voltages into the end of the grid. So it's more important than ever for utilities to keep an eye on the voltage slope across the circuit from the nearest end of the substation to the furthest end. Um, some are still a bit hesitant to do that. So we've created a little tool here to give an estimate by looking backwards at prior data on what your cost and CO2 savings could be had you been using uh, active EVO over, say, the last year. So what this does is it uh, picks up your uh, the first lambda there. You know, you use that to select your circuit because EVO is done circuit by circuit level. Select your circuit, and then it uh, determines what meters are on that circuit. The second lambda then calculates uh, an average value for either the 10 lowest meters on the circuit or 1% of your meters. Those are kind of rule of thumb that uh, distribution grid engineers use. Then that's passed off to your Voltvar estimator, which does the calculations, you know, if there's enough voltage drop there between the estimate and the ideal, uh, it'll tell you the dollar savings and CO2 reduction. Caches it in DynamoDB, so you can reference that later. So we think this will be pretty handy for utilities going forward. And uh, we're finalizing how this works as part of version two of the meter data analytics quick start. I'm going to wrap things up now by showing a couple examples of dashboards. And these are done in uh, Grafana. And so the first one here is what every customer wants to see, which is their energy usage versus weather. And in this sample here, we just put some calculations together to show you know, your average power consumption across the year, your uh, difference, you know, past year, current year, etc. And uh, this may be a bit hard to see, but the yellow line here is the weather. And so you, as you'd expect, as it's warmer, using less energy shows current year versus past year. The next bash dashboard is a consumption forecast. Uh, green is your past actual, yellow is your forecast. Uh, similar metrics up here. And these are things, right, customers can do on their own as they determine what information they want to show to the customer. Another one is the uh, spike detection. The uh, dip detection is similar, but what the model does here is it says, okay, for this particular household, you know, it builds a model that says, okay, every third Tuesday of the month, here's been their normal energy usage. And when a dip or spike is detected, it highlights that. So this, this is what this is showing. Uh, spike and dip detection are really good for uh, combining with meter alerts and alarms to detect energy theft. So that's a good use case for this. And then here's the outage map uh, example I was speaking about at the beginning of the talk, where you can map momentary meter outages on a geospatial background, that capability is built into Grafana. And in this case, we set this to say, okay, any meter that's had more than 30 momentaries in the last month, let's show that in red. So that's what's highlighted here. 
Now this is fake data. Uh, we generated a bunch of fake data. We mapped that against a public data source for the GIS locations for parking meters in New York. So this is pretty handy. It will make your operations folks uh, very happy when they see this. And of course, your customers even happier if they can track down and stop those momentaries. So wrapping things up here, we have a page full of resources and links where you can find out much more information about our MBA Quick Start. Of course, you can always reach out to myself or to Paul or to other members on our team, your account manager, to learn much more about how you can increase the value of your meter data with AWS. Thank you very much.